In this video, I'm gonna begin summarizing the quest lore in Westfall. So if you're like me and you skipped reading the quest while leveling your character, and you didn't pay attention to anything that was going on per the story, then let's jump in and find out what you missed in World of Warcraft. Before we get started, my name is Quaylen, and as mentioned before, I summarize the quest lore that you may have skipped reading while playing World of Warcraft. So if this is something that you'd be interested in, then make sure to hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified when I drop a new episode. I also stream live here on YouTube Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, so if you got nothing going on, come on over and hang out. Now, I'm really happy to start summarizing one of the best zones in the game, and that area is Westfall. So if you need a refresher on what happened before we got here, then check out this link over here which will start you at the beginning of the Elwyn Forest. But if you're all caught up, then let's jump into the next Alliance Zone and find out what's going on. When you enter Westfall, you speak with Lieutenant Horatio Lane. When you present the deed that you found in the Elwyn Forest, he says that you don't need to be getting involved with what's going on around here, and says that the Furl Bros have been squatting on the Jansen Steed for about five years. He also mentions that what you're looking at here is a murder scene, and you notice Farmer Furl Bro and his wife dead on the ground. Horatio says that we've got a double homicide, and also that Westfall is filled with a bunch of homeless people. So if you want to help, go ask the bums in the area if they saw anything happen. Happen. So you head out and speak with the homeless. And one of them likes to walk around while you talk, but <laughs> okay. Anyways, he says that if you want some information, you're gonna have to pay up. So if you don't pay up, he ends up fighting you and you kill him and then a bunch of kids rush in to loot his body. But when you start paying some money, the homeless start giving you a bunch of clues. One of them says that he didn't see who killed them, but he heard it. You also speak with a bunch of other people and everyone has their own little version of their own story. From here, you head out and return to the crime scene and relay the messages that you learned to Horatio, telling him that the bums say that the Knolls and the Murlocs killed these two people. But he doesn't really believe it because the murder is way too clean and way too perfect. But you know what isn't clean and perfect? This shirt, this is a horrid shirt because I was filming the other episode. Let me go ahead and change this, hold on. <sighs> okay, this is better, where were we? Oh yeah, Horatio. So he says that whoever murdered them had a particular reason to do it. But since we really don't have any other leads, Horatio wants you to track down the River Paul Knowles for clues, as well as the Murlocs on the coast, even though he thinks it's completely pointless. So you head out and arrive at the Knoll camp, killing them until you find a clue. Then you head out to the coast. And when you get there, you kill Murlocs until you find another clue. Then you head all the way back to the crime scene. And once you get there, you hand Horatio a piece of red cloth from the Knoll area. He asks if this is a joke because it's just a piece of red cloth. And as for the Murlocs, well, he says that he has a stack of whatever you found, which is like a piece of soaked paper or something like that. So basically, you're back to square one. Horatio wants you to speak with someone named Tushu Delu, who happens to be this old confidential informant of his. He might know some stuff about the murder. Lou can be located west of here at the Furl Bros old pumpkin farm. So now you head out and make your way over to that area. Once you arrive, you run up to Two Shoed Lou, who seems a bit on edge. Like he's trying to like hide from Horatio or something. But he says that he owes Horatio a favor or two and hands you a really large crate saying that this used to be his home. Yes, the man lived in a crate, but since he struck it rich, he doesn't need it anymore because he says that he's living verbatim, this is what he says, he's living the life of every hobo's dream. So he wants you to take the crate to the Jangalode mine to the southwest of here. And once you reach the back of the mine, you're to hide in the crate. I can only assume that you're gonna be eavesdropping on somebody. Now you run up to Jib Candles McHannigan, which is an awesome, awesome name. And he says that before the kobolds gave him a permanent limp, he used to be William Pestle's number one candle supplier. Remember William Pestle? He's the guy back in Goldshire in the inn. Anyway, this guy tells you how he used to bash kobolds' heads in, but now he's all messed up. 
So he wants you to kill 12 of them when you head out to the mine. I'm guessing that this is some kind of revenge quest. So now you head out to the Jangleode mine. And when you get there, you kill 12 of the kobolds and make your way to the very back of the mine. Once you're there, you hide in the crate and witness a meeting between Glubtok and a shadowy figure, which the figure insults Glubtok, making him mad. But then he's given two choices. One, he can attempt to kill the shadowy figure. Or two, he can join her and she'll make him very rich and very powerful. So, you know, he's not that dumb. And with the way that things are going, he goes with option two. Now you head out of the mine and make your way back to the pumpkin farm. Once you get there, you speak with Jim and he's super happy that you killed the kobolds, rewarding you with some stuff that he picked up when he was killing kobolds himself. Now, when you speak with Lou and start telling him about what happened in the back of the mine, he puts his hands over his ears and tells you he doesn't want to hear anything about it. Because according to him, that kind of information is liable to get you killed around here. But he says that he's got one more piece of advice and then we're done. He mentions that some thugs showed up and they're hanging out behind the old farmhouse here. But basically they were talking about something that might interest you. So you should really go see what's up with them. Also inside of the house here, you speak with Mama Celeste and she says that times are really tough here in Westfall stating that sometimes the people here will go weeks without a decent meal, but she's making dirt pies. Mmm, dirt pies, definitely my favorite. And yeah, she needs some ingredients to make these. And one of them is, well, dirt. And you can get that dirt outside in the pumpkin patch. She also needs some coyote tails from those that are wandering around outside in the area. So when you're out and about, collect six of the tails and five handfuls of fresh dirt. Now you head behind the farmhouse. And when you get there, you eavesdrop on the thugs who starts talking about someone who gave them some gold about the Furl Bros job. And a couple of the thugs ask if anyone saw this person's face, but then they notice you and they engage in combat because for them, it's the only way to deal with eavesdroppers. After you kill them, you hear a scream coming from the front of the house. When you get back there, you find the investigators asking questions to a bunch of people. While Lou's body is found on the ground dead with two gunshot wounds in his chest and his shoes on his head. Why his shoes are on his head, I really don't know. When you speak with Horatio, he says that this was done as a message and that whoever did this just killed the richest bum in Westfall in broad daylight. But then he starts to put together all of the clues that you have so far. The red cloth that you found, the water-soaked letter from the Murlocs, the secret conversation in the mine, the thugs behind the farmhouse, and comes to the conclusion that things just really aren't adding up. So he wants you to head to Saladin's farm, which is located to the south of here and ask the people down there what they may know. Before you head out, you run up to Mama Celeste, and she says that with the ingredients that you brought back, they're gonna eat like kings tonight with their Westfall mud pies. From here, you head out and make your way to Saldine's farm. Once you get there, you speak with Farmer Saldine, and when he finds out that Horatio sent you here, he tells you that Horatio is a scumbag and says that he really doesn't often give out advice, but the advice that he gives you is, get out of Westfall and that you're already way over your head because all that you're doing now is putting your head through the chopping block. But he says that times are tough, mentioning something about the scourge and how much money was spent on that war in Northrend. Basically anybody who didn't have a military contract became jobless and homeless after the events with the Lich King. And so this is why we have so many homeless people here in Westfall. He says that this farmhouse is basically a halfway house and his wife Salma does does all that she can to keep the guests alive. But it really doesn't help when you've got the watchers in the fields. And they like to kill people, a lot. So he wouldn't mind if you went out and shut down 10 of them. Now you run up to Salma, and she says she wants to prepare her famous Westfall stew, which requires six okra, six stringy flesh ripper meat, and six gore tusk flanks. So if you wouldn't mind getting those for her, that would be really helpful. So now you head out, kill the gore tusks and flesh rippers for their meat, as well as pick the okra from the ground. Then you kill the harvest watchers. And upon killing them, you find a mechanical heart, which appears to be fully functional based off the sound that it's making. 
and there's a really good chance that Farmer Saldane would like to see this. Now, you head back and speak directly with Salma. She thanks you for bringing back the ingredients and says that these orphans here haven't had a hot meal in days. Now, you speak with Farmer Saldine. He thanks you for killing the Watchers and gives you whatever coin he has as a reward. As far as the heart that you found, he says that he's heard stories about using one of those to power up a Watcher for personal use, but says that he's in no shape to do something like that himself. He also mentions that there's some harvest golems to the west of here at the Molson farm, and you can find them by looking for the ones with arcs of electricity around them. If you drop the heart into one of those, then you can take control of it. But when you do that, he wants you to kill 25 energized harvest reapers because those machines are worse than the ones that you just killed recently. But before you go, Farmer Saldane says that he's really thankful for everything that you've done so far. And although he can't really offer you any assistance with the Furl Bros case, he thinks that his wife Salma might have something that she can tell you. So you run back inside to speak with Salma. She says that her little girl works at Sentinel Hill specifically with the homeless and that maybe you'll find more information over there. Surprisingly, this leaves you at a cliffhanger as completing this quest finishes the first chapter in the Westfall storyline. I thought we were gonna get to Sentinel Hill before the achievement popped, but I guess this is where we're stopping. The murder mystery thing is really fun to follow and I can't wait to reveal who the shadowy figure is, which has me thinking, who do you think it is? And if you already know, don't ruin it. But if you don't know who it is, then let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. So next time we'll continue with chapter two to see what's going on in Westfall. Thanks for watching this video. And another friendly reminder, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I definitely invite you to jump on board so you can join us in the journey. And with that, we'll see you next time when we find out what happens next in the Tales of Azeroth.